Hi, this is Dr. Narayan from Sri Satyasai Super Speciality Hospital, Bangalore. This was a boy who is 14 years presented with nasal obstruction and epistaxis. CT scan showed a mass involving the nasopharynx and uh, extending into left spinopalatine fossa and infratemporal fossa and uh, crossing the septum and going into right side of uh, nasopharynx. In the axial cuts, you can see the enlargement of uh, spinopalatine foramen and the growth extending into the spinoid sinus also. The growth was on the sagittal scene as cuts was found to be pushing the posterior wall of maxillary sinus. On the contrast CT scan, enhancement of the mass was seen, showing the vascular nature of the mass. This patient was taken up for endoscopic excision under general anesthesia. The mass was seen involving the posterior part of nasal cavity. Endoscopically it was assessed and it was seen extending on the other side of nasopharynx also. Using coablation, posterior septectomy was planned and mucosa of the septum was first cauterized and then was ablated. The other side of nasal septum mucosa was also ablated to facilitate visualization and excision of the posterior part of the bony septum. Using a curved instrument, the bony septum was perforated and visualized on the other side. A periosteal elevator was taken and this bony septum was excised. Mucosa was further ablated using the coablation band and further pieces of posterior bony septum was removed. Bleeding points are coagulated using the coagulator. You can see the attachment of angiofibroma to the mucosa of the posterior septum. The septal mucosa was separated from the angiofibroma and coagulated to reduce the bleeding. Touching the angiofibroma can sometimes produce bleeding and that bleeding can be stopped using the coagulation band. A debrader was used to debrade away the mucosa of the posterior septum. 
here care is taken not to let the deep braider cutting edge touch the hinge of apron further removal of the mucosa was done the attachment of angiofibroma to the septal mucosa was identified and was coagulated the posterior septal bone is further dissected out and removed here take care is taken not to enter the other side inferior turbinate or middle turbinate small part of posterior cartilaginous septum is also removed the mucosa of the posterior nasal septum is further separated from the angiofibroma mm -hmm. and is ablated when the angiofibroma gets attached to the septum here it also takes blood supply from the septal mucosa here you can you you can see the separation of angiofibroma from the mucosa and the blood vessels are cauterized at the same time using a true cutting forceps the posterior end of the septum is further removed this removal of the posterior septum helps in manipulation and traction and delivery of the angiofibroma from the sphenopalatine area and the infratemporal fossa sometimes we may see some bleeding from the surface of the angiofibroma that can be controlled by using the coagulation mode of the coagulator band you can see that bleeding stopping with the coagulation band sometimes if the bleeding cannot be stopped with coagulation band band a ribbon gas soaked in adrenaline can be placed for some time to reduce the bleeding coagulation this uh, deep breeder is used to further remove that small part of septum to improve the exposure the middle turbinate of the left side is further pushed to get better exposure and the superior part of posterior septum is further removed
here we can see that angiofibroma extending into the the spinoethmoid races. Here angiofibroma is separated from the superior valve. Nasopharynx. Here, mucosa is elevated from the rostrum of sphenoid. We can see my band entering into the sphenoid sinus in an attempt to remove that angiofibroma which is extending into the sphenoid sinus. The bony rostrum of sphenoid is being defined by separating the mucosa from both the sides. The angiofibroma is being separated from the anterior wall of sphenoid sinus area. Here the mucosa is further separated. Using a diamond bar, the bone over the anterior wall of sphenoid is being drilled out to get better exposure of the extension of angiofibroma into the sphenoid sinus. Angiofibroma is being separated from the roof of the nasopharynx. During removal of this periosteal attachments, sometimes we may encounter bleeding from the septal branches of the sphenopalatine artery, which runs over the anterior wall of the sphenoid. But the coagulation mode of the coagulation band helps in controlling that bleeding. care is taken to not to enter into the tumor and remove the tumor at the periosteal plane. Further separation of the tumor is being done and the tumor is brought down by separating its attachment to the sphenoid sinus area. Using the coagulation mode of the coagulator band helps in reducing the bleeding. The diamond bar is used to further remove the rostrum of the sphenoid to get more space for dissection and better exposure of the tumor in the sphenoid area. Tumor is further dissected out.
bone from the anterior wall of sphenoid is removed. Now we can see the sphenoid sinus and extension of tumor into the sphenoid. Now tumor is being separated from the right nasopharynx lateral wall. Here it is important to differentiate between the tumor and the normal adenoid tissue and dissect in that plane to separate the tumor. Again here also the septal branch from the right spinopalatine artery can be sometimes encountered. Now, the Denker's opening of the maxillary sinus on the left side is being attempted. After coagulation of the mucosa, the inferior turbinate is being removed using the, the depredal. This Denker's approach helps in dissecting the tumor from the spinopalatine and infratemporal fossa. The anterior end of inferior terminate on the left side is being removed. Sometimes there can be troublesome bleeding from the posterior end of this inferior terminate. Using the coagulation, using the coagulation mode, the bleeding is controlled. Again, this coagulation band is used to separate and with a dissector, the periosteum is elevated from the anterior surface of the maxillary sinus. The bleeders are controlled using the co coagulation band in the coagulation mode. The bone is removed using a gauge and hammer. Bleeding is controlled using the population band. A drill is used to perform the medial maxillectomy. A septal window was created to pass the suction and help in unhindered working of the the drill and coagulation. Right side mucoperichondrin is elevated. A small incision is taken over this septum and using the 50 number blade a opening is done in the septal, septal cartilage and it is pushed out. And the same blade is used to, to have a small window in the septal mucosa so that we can have instruments passing from the other side. The bone is further removed from the medial wall of maxillary sinus and using a diamond burr, a opening is created in the maxillary sinus. The opening is further enlarged using gauge and forceps. Here the nasolacrimal duct is identified and cut flush with the floor of the orbit. 
diamond bar is further used to enlarge the opening. While enlarging it superiorly, care is taken not to enter into the arm. The bony pieces are further removed. Again, bleeding from the inferior turbinate is controlled using the coagulation mode. Thorough removal of this bone is important for good exposure and dissection in the spinopalatine region. Mucosa from the maxillary sinuses are removed. Debrider and coagulation and coagulators are excellent tools for exposure and hemostasis in angiofibroma surgeries. The mucosa is further removed from the roof of uh, the maxilla. The left middle turbinate is resected using a turbinate messenger. improve the exposure. That is the bulla which is being exposed. Bleeding is controlled using the coagulation. Here attachment of tumor from the ethmoid cells is being exposed and superior extent of the tumor is defined by opening the ethmoid cells. Coagulator is used to open the posterior ethmoidal cells here. The removal of these cells in the posterior ethmoid is important for the good exposure and proper dissection of the angiofibroma from the lateral wall of the nose. We can see the continuity of the nasopharyngeal part of the tumor with the tumor in the spinopalatine region. The mucosa over the maxillary sinus is further removed. That is the bony septa which are being further defined, defined and removed. The mucosa over the lateral wall of the nose is further removed using the coagulator. It is the further removal of the 
positive at margins. Tumor is being separated from the posterior medial cells area. These are the bony septa which are separating the spinopalatine region and the tumor in the nasal cavity. Removal of this bone helps in good exposure of the spinopalatine region. The mucosa over the posterior wall of maxillary sinus is being removed and we can see the tumor which is pushing the posterior wall of maxilla anteriorly. It is important to remove all these sharp bony speckles we don't remove this bone, it will hold the tumor and don't allow it to come out properly. This bulged out bone over the NJ fibroma is drilled with a dry member. The periosteum over the spin of palatine fossa is being cauterized. Bone is further thinned out. after thorough drilling of this bone. The bony septa are also drilled out to improve the exposure. Bleeding from the periosteum is controlled using the pop letter. After the bone is thinned out, it was elevated. That is the bone being removed. Carison sponge again is an excellent instrument here to remove the bone from the small small crevices. Here you can see the connection between the nasal, nasal part of the tumor and the tumor in the spinopalatine first getting exposed. The tumor is further separated to find out the plane which needs to be dissected. Here, the coagulation gland serves three purposes. It irrigates the area to be dissected. It sucks out the blood and improves the visualization at the site of dissection. And by that coagulation, it stops the bleeding at the site of dissection. Again, here, debrader is being used to define the upper limit of the tumor here. That is the dissection in the posterior ethmoid region. 
that helps in taking the supramedial control of the tumor. When we are doing the superior dissection, the infraorbital nerve should be our level of dissection because if you go above that in the spinopalatine fossa region, we have the middle cranial fossa. Here the periosteum over the spinopalatine fossa is being coagulated. The periosteum is incised using a sickle knife. Care is taken not to injure the tumor or the internal maxillary artery. Once this incision is taken, the periosteum is separated. Once we peel away this periosteum, we will get the exposure of the tumor. Gentle dissection helps in getting the proper plane for separation. Periostem is being peeled away from the tumor region. You can see the blood vessels getting exposed. These vessels are cauterized using, you can see the pulsations. These blood vessels are cauterized either using coablation or using monocolor cauter. Once we cauterize and stop this blood flowing into the tumor, the bleeding from the tumor reduces further. The bone is further removed. Whenever we get a bleeding, that bleeding can be controlled using the coagulation. Coagulation and separation of the periosteum helps in better exposure of the tumor. We can see the fat getting prolapsed from the superior area. That tells about the lateral extent of the tumor. These sharp bony edges need to be removed. Here the periosteum is gently ablated to get the good exposure of the tumor. Through the septal window, if we hold the tumor and pull it medially, that helps in proper dissection. That is the fat which is being debrided away. That tells the lateral extent of the tumor. Holding the tumor through the septal window and pulling it medially, tumor is being separated from the spinopalatine fossa. The periosteum is further separated. Tumor is being dissected superiorly in the spinopalatine region. Attachment of tumor to the soft tissue is being done. As we keep on dissecting the attachments, Gentle pull of the tumor helps in its delivery into the 
maxillary sinus and nasal cavity region. can see the tumor getting delivered. Gentle dissection using an elevator can help in the delivery of the tumor. Here we can see the tumor extending into the intratemporal fossa. Separating the periosteum over the tumor helps in the proper, we can see that proper delivery of the tumor. Once the periosteum attachment is separated, and if you do that gentle traction, the tumor comes into the nasal cavity. Once the internal maxillary artery is coagulated, we can see the tumor has become whitish. Now we can see the intratemporal fossa region is being delivered out. Coagulation is used to further separate the attachment of the tumor. You can see the delivery of the tumor. The attachments are further separated from the tumor using the coagulation mode of the coagulator band. Now the delivery of the tumor from the infratemporal fossa and spinocolatin region is complete. Now further attachments of the tumor into the lateral wall of nasal cavity is being done. The bleeders over the surface of the tumor can be controlled using the coagulation mode. Tumor is further separated from the region of pelvic verge. Separation of tumor here is very important. And the bone of the pterygoid region should be drilled with the diamond bar at the end of surgery to reduce the chance of recurrence. Another critical area here is the Vidian canal. Again, care is taken to have the complete removal of the tumor from the Vidian canal region also. Tumor is being gently dissected from the periosteum. That is the posterior end of the inferior terminate, which is being coagulated to improve the exposure. The terminate is degraded away. Periosteum is further separated from the lateral wall of the nasopharynx. These are the final attachments of the tumor. Endoscope gives excellent vision 
to find the proper site and remove. Here tumor is being pulled up to find the attachment of tumor to the nasopharynx and tumor is being separated from the nasopharynx. Here tumor is further separated from the nasopharyngeal periosteum. That is the separation of the tumor as it goes into the spinal sinus. By pulling up the tumor, we will get that attachment of the tumor to the nasopharyngeal mucosa. Now we are pushing the tumor into the nasopharynx. Tumor is pushed into the nasopharynx and final attachments are being separated. You can see the attachment of the tumor to the periosteum of the posterior wall of nasopharynx. Final attachments are being separated from the tumor. Tumor is being pushed into the nasopharynx to facilitate the delivery from the oral cavity. These are the last remnants of the periosteal attachments. After separation of these periosteal attachments, tumor is made free of all the attachments. If you don't remove these attachments properly, then tumor will not get delivered. The bleeding from the periosteal edge is being controlled. That is the tumor removed from the oral cavity and that is the tumor. You can see the nasal and the intratemporal fossa components. Now, the nasopharynx was found to be clean and as I was telling the pterygoid ridge was drilled with a diamond burr and the nasal cavity and this raw area was lined with the gel, gel film. 